Hey everyone, Pastor George here with today's Bible study recap. Today in Bible study, we continued with our last week of Jesus' ministry theme, and now we are four days before the Passover. So today we looked at a passage from the Gospel of John, a rather long one in, in John chapter 12, which is verses 19 through 50, which happens the day after Jesus enters the city. And here we have uh, a really interesting thing where you see Jesus begin to set up what's going to happen at the end of the week in some of the teachings that he uses. And what's interesting is kind of what sets it off. So if you were actually open your Bible and you looked at these verses, or if you go online and you pull them up or whatever, you're going to notice that one of the verses, 19, uh, kind of comes before a natural break, right? So 19 is kind of the end of, of a narrative, and then 20 starts a new one, um, but they're connected to each other. Because you have to remember that in these texts originally, there were no chapters or verses or chapter headings. Today, uh, all of us use these things just as helpful guides for topic and things like that, um, reference, etc. But uh, today, I started us in 19, which is the end of a little section and the beginning of into a beginning of a new one with verse 20. And this section ends verse 19 with the pharisees talking to one another arguing with each other about jesus and the uh the reaction of the crowds that are happening to the triumphal entry and how excited everyone is and they say kind of in a hyperbolic way look the whole world has gone after them right the whole world has gone after him and then the very next verse that happens is john twelve twenty, where it talks about greeks who have come to see Jesus. So there's this poetic irony that John uses in his gospel to show that they're they're making they make this remark about how the whole world's gone after him, and then you have the rest the, the world come to Jesus in the people of the Greeks. Obviously, that the, these Greeks, whoever they were, uh, wanting to see Jesus, are stand in for Gentiles, and that plays a major role in setting up what Jesus talks about for the rest of this chapter, which is why we went to the end. Really, honestly, you could, you could keep going after that, but it's a pretty nice uh, thing. You know, we, we, I only have so much time <laughs> um, and attention span for my students to do that. So anyway, right, so G the, the reason this is important is the Greeks come, they represent the Gentiles, and Jesus says something interesting. He says, my time has come. Now, if you have notes in your Bible or if you look at your cross-references, hopefully it'll send you to other points earlier in John where Jesus says, my time has not come. He says this several times. He's like, my time has not come. My time has not come. My time has not come. And now finally, he says, my time has come. And he begins to talk about his death. And what sets this up is these Greeks wanting to speak to him. Because it is when the Gentiles are ready to, to show up and believe in him that the world, right, the, the, the world is going after him, that he is, he is going to die in order to open up the kingdom of God to the world right to everyone who believes and that sets off the whole rest of the passage i mean he uses a metaphor about a wheat stalk dying alone but when it dies it produces a lot of fruit right jesus is talking about himself and this whole time he has in mind the mass vast majority of his listeners who are jewish people right uh, judeans who are aware of these traditions a lot of them right aware of messianic prophecies because they don't understand why Jesus has to die if he's the Messiah, because of their reading a text that says he's going to be forever. So how does that make sense? And John talks about this, right? Uh, and he says in in the verses that um, that the, the Jesus did these miracles, right? This falls about midway through our reading. Jesus did these miracles, but still people did not believe in him. So even though they're getting all these signs, right, what happens is faith is created by the Lord. That's what happens. We, we often think that we can rationalize or reason ourselves into faith. And I'm not saying that reason doesn't or can't play a good supporting role. But ultimately, the one who gives faith is the Lord. That, that's what the Bible teaches, and that's what we believe as Christians, right? That you can't faith yourself into things, right? God has to reveal it to you. I use the example of how... At the end of Matthew, when we're doing when he's doing the Great Commission, there were still people who doubted, even though Jesus was standing there right in front of them. So faith is something that God creates; can't be reasoned into it as much as we might like for that to happen, because it would be a lot. Uh, maybe we would think it would be a lot easier, but in general, 
it seems the human heart is not is not does not work that way so god breaks through that through his power in order to create faith and that's all of us christians that's why we talked a little bit bit today about how even if we were at this time right we might think that we might not be believers but if if we are elect then god would have would have put faith on our hearts right so we can have we can have assurance that god in god's sovereignty we are secure if that makes sense so jesus moves on from there to talk to his disciples and he talks about how he and the father are one he talks about how if to, to see him is to see the father to give up your life right he talks about this earlier he talks about how you must hate your life and live for me right and that means following his commands unlike some of the believers who follow jesus but are scared to admit it because they don't want to be kicked out of the synagogue right this has a, a, an important thing because jesus as he says near the end did not come to judge the world but to save it and but people who reject him who turn their back on him do have their judge and that's in the father at the last day all this is just to say is that jesus does care quite a bit about how we live our lives after this faith has been created in us but it is not us willing ourselves to be like god but rather god breaking through our hearts and bringing us to him and so jesus knows that he's going to the cross he's announcing it pretty publicly at this time in in ways that he you know some people understand some people don't um and that we're going to see that as he gets closer to the to the time when he is going to die so we're going to pick up to next week with three days uh and we're going to talk about the fig tree which is exciting so i hope to see all of you uh, next uh, week and i'll see you tomorrow for my new thing video and sunday for worship peace out